Hello and welcome to the first episode of What Have We Learned in College? This is your host, Alejandra, who's going to be talking about a very important subject, psychology. In particular, we're going to be talking about the topic of coping. However, before we get started, we need to understand why coping occurs. Well, when an individual experiences a stressor, which is often caused by external factors, such as upcoming deadlines, the person begins a process of evaluation where they determine if the event is negative or positive. Once a person has determined an event as negative, they perceive the problem as either a challenge or a threat. When a person believes that they do not have the resources to deal with the demands of the circumstance, they perceive the stressor as a threat. For example, when a person who has never completed an essay within a week is presented with the last minute assignment that is due, for example, within six days, they will perceive their resources of time and knowledge as not being substantial enough to tackle the task. Therefore, the individual will determine that this assignment is a threat. Coping is the action taken to alleviate and manage stress. Once the individual has been presented with a the stressor, they cope with their stress by using two different coping styles, problem-focused and emotion-focused coping. The first coping style is, as the name suggests, focus on reducing the problem. In this coping style, an individual faced with a stressor determines that the best way to diminish their stress is to begin addressing the source of the stress right away. In our previous example, a person who uses this coping style takes direct action by going to office hours, creating an outline, and attending meetings with writing tutors, all in the hopes of diminishing the effect of the stressor. By addressing the stressor immediately, an individual attempts to manage their stress in the long run. On the other hand, the second coping style is emotion-focused, which is, once again, focused on relieving the individual from stress. Individuals who choose to partake in this coping style do so because they believe that in order to address the issue, they need to address the stress itself. As a result, they convince themselves that partaking in other activities will benefit them in the long run. In our example, the individual faced with the essay would stand up from their desk, walk out of their studying room, and start another activity in the next room that brings them less stress, such as reading, watching funny videos, exercising, or cleaning. As you can hear, an individual who partakes in emotion-based coping suppresses their thoughts, distracts themselves through humor, and engages in other less stressful tasks to diminish their stress. Although this coping style is beneficial in dealing with stress in the short term, this coping style can easily lead an individual to forget about the stressor, which will only make their stress worse in the future. So, how does coping relate to psychology? Well, psychology is the study of the mind and behavior. And the behaviors described in the coping styles are a result of the thought processes that occur in the mind. For example, when you experience a stressor, you give yourself a choice, whether you are aware of it or not, to either address the source of the stress or address the stress you experience as a result of the stressor. This choice between what you determine to be more important is what leads to different behavior. These behaviors can be seen in the coping styles as someone who chooses the emotion-focused coping style makes a conscious choice in their mind to prioritize alleviating their stress over dealing with the problem, which leads to this behavior of distraction by, for example, watching cat videos. But if they had chosen to prioritize the problem, then they would have taken direct action, such as creating outlines to diminish their stress. So in the end, these coping styles rely on the choice that a person makes in their mind which showcases this interaction between mind and behavior that the field of psychology studies. The reason why I brought this topic to your attention 
was because I am interested in finding a balance between a problem-focused coping style and an emotion-focused coping style. Because as of right now, whenever I utilize the problem-solving coping style, I take action to reduce the problem, but despite my efforts, I still experience large amounts of stress. On the other hand, when I shift to an emotion-focused coping style, I tend to forget about the problem. And while I'm relaxing, I feel as though I'm wasting my time because I feel really, really guilty that I'm relaxing when I should be progressing on my project, which to be honest, only makes me more stressed. At least for me, these coping mechanisms are both equally stressful and do not work for me. That is the reason why I wanted to find a balance between these two coping styles, because I wanted to address the stressor from multiple angles. In the end, I came up with a simple solution, which involves utilizing both coping styles at the same time. First, you begin by using the problem-focused coping style to begin working on diminishing the source of the stress. However, when you start feeling the accumulation of your stress, you should utilize the second coping style to distract yourself from the stress by participating in a small activity that you enjoy, such as drawing. In order to prevent your productivity from decreasing and your stress from increasing, time these breaks. This will ensure that you don't forget about the source of stress and take the appropriate steps to diminish the stressor. By taking breaks, you'll be able to manage your stress to be your most productive self. Although this solution may sound simple, it is definitely a lesson I had to learn the hard way. So don't be like me and utilize these coping styles together. I want to thank you guys for listening and wish you a wonderful rest of your day. Godspeed.